I'm also excited that it's almost spring and we're going to talk about that today. Um, just a heads up, we're doing a bit of a writing prompt at the end today. It won't be the usual where we fill the whole time with it. Um, but if you want to have a journal or some paper and pen ready, um, you can go ahead and grab that now. And otherwise, also, we'll always do our toast. So make sure you have a drink handy. Um, but yeah, let's get started officially. I'm going to hand it over to Chris. Let's, uh, let's do our naming practice today. Um, I've asked Airmare if, if he's able to speak. I, uh, in the chat, I'm not sure if he is able to do that. Uh, yes. Um, so uh, what we do in our naming practice, we, we all know each other here, but we uh, say our name and our preferred pronouns. And uh, it's, it's just at being aware of our space that we're inhabiting and the place that we're in, in the present. We have nothing else but the present. And that's, we're here right now. And um, I, would, I would also encourage you that today is a day that you can be mindful, not judgmental, but mindful of the space that you take up. Um, mindful that sometimes a person can take up too much space and other times people will be a wallflower and not take up enough space. And so we ask you not to judge it and not to judge one another, but simply um, being able to join us in this space. So I will go first. I'm Chris uh, with he, him pronouns, uh, and then I'll call you out, unmute, and uh, please tell us, your, tell us your name and if you care for preferred pronouns. Um, Nathan? Uh, Nathan Johns, uh, he, him, his, uh, from Lebanon, Tennessee. Yes. Also where you're, uh, where you're zooming from. Thank you, Nathan. Uh, Melissa. Melissa, she, her, hers in Franklin. And Cindy, she, her, hers in Franklin. I see. See, uh, Alana. Uh, Alana Biggs, uh, Haven. And uh, Malia. Malia, she, her, Brentwood, Tennessee. JJ. JJ, he, him, from East Nashville right now. Doug. Doug Day from Franklin, Tennessee. He, him. Thank you. Welcome. Sarah. Sarah, uh, she, her, hers from South Nashville. Thank you. Leah? I'm Leah. I use she, her pronouns, and I'm at East Nashville. Thank you. And Airmare is also with us from Parts Unknown. I, I can't remember. Lima? Lima, Peru? Anyway, uh, Airmare is, uh, yes, Airmare is unable to uh, speak with uh, his microphone, but we're glad that you are all here and Linda will join us momentarily, fashionably late as always. Thanks everyone. Next up. All right, I am up next with Tell Me Something Good, the opportunity to point to the goodness that's going on in the world around us and um, see it even in the midst of hard and heavy things. And so we'll start out with our song where everybody's gonna unmute and sing along. And, um, you know, I think at this point we, everybody knows it. So we're going to even start in different keys. I'm not even, literally not even going to give you a key. We're just going to go. Everybody's just going to tell me something good. Um, we'll do, I'll count it down two, three, four, and then tell me something good. And whatever key you're in, that's the key we want. So here we go. Ready? Two, three, four. Tell, tell me something good. <laughs> That was even not better. bad. Even yeah. better. It actually wasn't bad. That was I not bad. Pretty much in the same spot. In the key um, of chaos. So I'll, uh, I'll start out with uh, sharing the good because it, we were talking about it earlier is that, um, yeah, I've been dealing with some health stuff 
on and off for a year and uh, it I've had a billion billion tests over the past few months and um, cause it just got to be a bit too much and now there seems to be a plan. And so that makes me feel happy, um, and very hopeful and, in a, um, and not crazy. So, um, I'm very excited about all of those things. So who else has something good to share? Well, yeah. I got a new car. <laughs> Yay. What kind is it? It's a 2021 Honda Insight. Mm -hmm. Just the dedicated Honda hybrid model, so sedan. Nice. So, I'm excited. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. That is good. Melissa? So I've been permanently substitute teaching um, with special education kids, specifically in middle school. And it's been so good, y'all. Um, one, I have a all the kids in the room that I'm in predominantly are, are very high needs, um, some of them nonverbal. And I work with this girl, Nicole, who's nonverbal, except for she says hi every once in a while. Um, and she ha uses like an iPad to communicate if she wants to communicate. Well, she's been with the teacher since August. And then each of these kids has a, a an aid every day. Like they always have a one-on-one -on, -one on top of the teacher. And so I've been with her. And this week we got done with her like, morning prompts and she asked on her ipad i want to listen to one direction <laughs> and so i took her sort of to the back um because they other kids were still doing their work and i played it just quietly on my phone so i was trying not to be disruptive but also wanted to honor her request and so she starts screaming like Wah! and laughing and dancing it was absolutely amazing and then we went back and sat down and we switched TAs for the next period. And I got back with her two periods later. And as soon as I sat down, she typed in her iPad, I want more of you. And I was like, oh my gosh, my day is absolutely made. Um, and then also on the flip side, because there's so much, um, there's so much attention needed. It's, it is, it, it is emotionally exhausting to a level that I didn't realize it would be. And someone told me early on, like a month ago, if you can take a general education day every once in a while, you should take it. And I was like, no, I'll be fine. You know, well, this week, like Thursday morning, I was completely exhausted and got in there. And um, well, on my way, I was like, universe, I could maybe use a gen ed day, maybe. And I got there and had one. And literally, I literally just sat at a desk all day in this um, like advanced calculus class or whatever. And, and the kids did anything. And so anyways, there was also this beautiful relief in the midst of the week. So it's been a really good week. Yay. Sarah. Yeah, uh, this weekend I got to actually really hug my parents for the first time in over a year, um, which is really cool. I've been able to like see them, but they're in that high risk category. And so we've been really, really cautious about how we interact with them. Um, but they've been vaccinated for a while now. I've been vaccinated. And and so it's been it was just a really sweet weekend of just um, I wasn't anxious about being around them or just like what could happen. I was like fully present um, and we just had a really great time. And Hot Springs is a little gem. So if you ever get to go there, you should check it out. It's beautiful. So. Yeah. Yeah. Lana. So I. So um, in in um in Houston, there's a small town outside that's called Kingwood, Texas, and there's a place in Kingwood, Texas that is home to a small Indian village, a small Native American village, and they're called the, uh, they are the uh, Hikawa tribe. And so I have the privilege of being able to go there and actually be in their domain and actually be able to um, sit with them. There was like a, a special barrier because of COVID and social distancing, but I, I got to sit at the barrier and they, and they just, kind of taught you about nature and how things connect. Um, you know, they showed us different birds, uh, you know, reptiles, you know, things of the earth. And um, then they uh, played their self-carved wood instruments. They did a tribal dance and they um, 
it, all in all, it was just, it was a really neat experience just to sit down with some dudes in Southern America who originally founded it and um, just to be able to learn from them. And I, I learned a lot of interesting things. And another fun fact is Melissa McCarthy and Octavia Spencer are officially coming to Netflix as superheroes on a movie called The Thunder Force. It is a superhero movie with a comedy twist. I have seen the trailer. I laughed my head off. And it's it's really good. I highly encourage that you that you check that out. Very cool. Love it. Nathan. Uh, yeah, so a little over a year ago, I was assigned a project at work that was in addition to my regular duties, and it basically took all of my time. Um, <laughs> it was, uh, to put it in a nutshell, I, I designed and executed three uh, double-blind competitive studies uh, for our uh, different business units, and um, those finally came to a close. Uh, we've been presenting the results out since starting last week, and um, so far it's been met with really positive feedback from executives, uh, which I'm really excited about. So, congrats! Thanks. Awesome. Hi, Linda. And Chris, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Allergy season. Uh, sorry. <laughs> Boy, that was perfect. And it felt good, right? Oh, it felt so good. Um, uh, Meg and I, uh, Meg, Meg had been chasing me down uh, for a hike uh, over Shelby Bottoms, uh, East Nashville, Cornelia Air, Airport, Airport, the Air Park area. And so we were able to do that on Friday. And we walked 3.2 miles uh, and walked on the <laughs> Air Mayor just said I went deaf, Chris. <laughs> Sorry, dude. Um, we walked over the bridge, you know, the the foot and bike bridge over the river into Donaldson. That was crazy. And I just love new hiking experiences and just seeing new things. And we just talked the entire time and then went and got pizza afterwards. And uh, gosh, I, we just love Meg and they are just so full of energy and has been since the moment you know they were born in 95 and uh i just it was such a blast such a blast to spend those hours together and oh also they showed me how to deposit a check through an atm which i had never done before until <laughs> I know. I see the faces. I see the faces. I am what you would call a last adopter as opposed to a first adopter on technology. And I didn't, I didn't trust it. I did. I was nervous. How and else I, do you deposit a check? Have you done it through your phone? Right. That's also what I was. Because if you haven't, then I have news for you. No, no, no. That that's going to take me another 10 years probably. But <laughs> That's going to yeah. take me a while. I, like you needed to ask that question. Yeah, exactly. By yeah. that time, Chris, you'll just be able to look at the check and deposit it. <laughs> yeah, just hold it up to my forehead. <laughs> right? As it goes through the market yeah. of peace, it'll yeah. just they, be they like... They do that microchip. <laughs> the microchip that I get in the vaccine yeah. is going to then... That's it. Yeah. So anyway, uh, I, it was a great, great day to to do all that stuff and learn some things and... Meg was able to get my Siri working again on my phone. Anyway, it was a great day. I'm telling you something good. Many things good. Thank you. Those are all good things. All good things. Anybody else? Malia has one. No. I have another one that I forgot about um, yeah. until we started talking about other stuff. I'm signed up to get my first dose of the vaccine. All four of us in our family got appointments in Clarksville. So, wow, <laughs> it's happening. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. 
So cool. Well, thank you everybody for sharing and for uh, bringing smiles and joy and um, pointing to the good things every day. And may we continue this practice even when we leave here and are on our home on our own, um, spreading this kind of joy in the lives of others and in our own as we continue to walk this life. So um, now I will hand it over to Nathan. Thanks, JJ. Each time we formally gather, we include acknowledgments as part of our spiritual practices. These acknowledgments serve to help a step out of our typical day-to-day -day lives and see the larger world around us. As we set aside time to offer these acknowledgments, let us recognize that this is the merely the beginning of our collective work and not the end. And so I will offer an anti-racism acknowledgement. We as a community recognize that white supremacy and systemic racism are an insidious part of our society. Intentional or not, we recognize the harmful impact of its presence in our lives and the impact it has on Black, Indigenous, and people of color members of this community and other communities around us. We commit ourselves to an active practice of anti-racism. We commit to rooting out and addressing racism whenever and wherever we find it, starting within each of us and extending into our communities and the greater world around us. And with that, I'll hand it over to Sarah. And I'll offer our land acknowledgement today. And so today we want to honor the land and we want to also acknowledge the erasure of the indigenous people of the land and acknowledge that this was once in Nashville, the land of the Shawnee and the Cherokee. And we know that by acknowledging and honoring the land, it's a start to begin to heal the land and to heal ourselves and honor those who deserve to be honored. And thinking about springtime, Melissa's going to talk about spring, but thinking about, I know I feel it. I feel this like budding energy that's kind of within me right now. And I'm excited about that and that motivation and energy that that will burst forth. Uh, and I'm currently reading a book called by Tokopa Turner, the, her book on belonging. And I read this quote today and it really was really fitting. And so I'm just going to read that and I'll put it in the chat. But she says, she says, Westerners have forgotten what indigenous people understand to be cardinal, that this world owes its life to the unseen. Every hunt, every harvest, every death, and every birth is distinguished by ceremony for that which we cannot see, feeding back that which feeds us. I believe our epidemic alienation is, in good part, the felt negligence of that reciprocity. Super powerful stuff today, but I'll turn it over to whoever, I forget. I think it might be my turn. Too. It's Leah, yeah. <laughs> It is. Sorry, I was trying to grab my book, my Tokopa book, and it must be in the hallway. But I, the book, if y'all don't follow Tokopa, you need to on Instagram and get the book. It is mind blowing. And that just to follow the thread, Abby introduced me to it, who um, Meg introduced it to Ab, her, her to Abby. So love it. Leah, it's all you, babe. Cool. It's body time. Um, so we're going to do stop. Breathe, know your worth. Is there anybody who is not familiar with it that wants me to review it? Okay. We can all do it together. Um, okay, I know that we've all done this before, but take a minute to quiet yourself, um, get in touch with your body, calm your mind, and get ready for what Melissa has in store for us. All right. Stop. Breathe know your worth. Again, stop, breathe, know your worth. And then one more time. Stop, breathe, know your worth. Thanks, y'all. Love, love, love it. Thanks, everybody. Um, I always love it. If, if anyone else is interested ever in leading a practice, please let us know. Um, I love that we do this together and we take turns and um, each are learning to continually use our voices, not just during the practices, but during the space. That's what it's all about. So um, thank you all. 
So one year, one year into this pandemic had me really thinking like, not just about our new normal and um, as many of us, I'm sure are still longing. Uh, there's parts of the past that we still long uh, for. Um, and there's definitely parts of the past that we're done with and ready to move on from um, in hopes of a better future, right? But upon like me thinking about and interrogating my own thoughts and questions and hopes, um, I started thinking about and researching seasons um, and life cycles and remembering that our lives are dynamic and unfolding and, and never static. Um, that although the seasons go round and round the same, like there is something we can um, expect and look forward to that also we are not the same, right? We evolve, hopefully, um, some at a slower pace than others, and that's okay. Um, but it just reminded me that life is not linear. Um, and so as we're walking, about to walk into a new spring season, um, we are hopefully and no doubt different than we were a year ago. Um, and so with each new season, I think comes new opportunities um, for us to change and to grow. And I wanted us to think about spring intentionally, um, at least this year, and maybe we have before. Um, but for me, I wanted to think about it intentionally and think about what this season offers us. So one of the questions, and we're going to get to questions at the end where you can write or at least think um, responsively and, and hopefully share with us. But what are the goals that you have for yourself or have you set goals for yourself this season? Um, walking into a new season, letting go of winter and walking into spring, what goals do you have for yourself? And hopefully every season is encouraging us and we're realizing that we have opportunities to live more fully, um, that we can pay attention not only to nature and, and what the land, that's why we do this land acknowledgement too, not only to name the erasure of the people, but also for us to continue to pay attention to nature and this beautiful world around us and the lessons that it offers us. And then also to pay attention to ourselves um, and to humanity and everything that we can learn, not only internally when we look reflect reflectively, but also externally when we look to others in their journeys. But we have to start here. And I love that Chris made note of it uh, early on in the naming practice. We have to start with this moment right here, right now. This is what we have and are we present to it and understanding um, the reality in which that we find ourselves. So spring. Spring, um, the spring equinox or the vernal equinox is coming up on March 20th. So we won't gather again until the end of that week. So I wanted us to look forward to that and know that if you didn't know, that is the gateway into the spring season officially. It is only one of two days in the entire year where day and night, light and dark are equal um, across the globe. So there's balance there, right? There's yin and yang, there is inner and outer um, at perfect equilibrium. The natural world then is coming alive as Sarah noted, it's, it's budding. There is this energy flowing that we can pay attention to. The sun gains more strength. The days finally become longer and warmer. There is a gentle whispered moment of birth, of new, um, it's time for our hopes to become not only evidence, um, hopes like JJ mentioned already, hopes of clarity, right, that this is becoming evident, but then there's also something to do because of that. When we pay attention to that, action should follow. So one myth of the spring equinox, um, it was understood by many ancestors to be a potent portal time of power. So the spring equinox has long been celebrated as a time of awakening of this growing energy and budding new life, but its earlier roots began um, with most ancient myths and um, tales about this goddess, this goddess that regained her power and um, became very fertile after the long months of winter. So one of the myths is that the Greek mother goddess Demeter, whose daughter was Persephone, fell in love with Hades, right, the god of the underworld, and was tricked into staying with him for months in this underworld, which becomes our winter. In her despair, though, Demeter lets all of life then around her wither and die, okay, think about winter and what happens during winter, until she is finally reunited with her daughter Persephone in the spring, where once again life begins to blossom. 
So there's these symbolic battles in these myths between light and dark, between growth and decay, between life and death. And they aren't just confined though to these myths. They become a part of our reality as well. Like we all go through them in our lives too, especially during the winter months where many of us um, have felt this collective uh, weight, this heaviness, this um, darkness. Some people feel literally uh, more sadness and experience more depression during the winter months as the sun is not as active for us to see. Um, but winter can also be a time for us to focus on our inner work that needs to be done. But now that winter's coming to a close, we uh, don't need to look back in frustration or in judgment over what opportunity we missed. But now we can look to this moment right here and know with expectation of what is to come in spring and what opportunities do we want to take advantage of. So spring is where light and life gain enough power to emerge and to expand. And that is my hope for myself and for all of us that we would pay attention to, that we would capture this light, that we would choose to emerge and expand new. So one of these goddesses um, was named the goddess Ostara or Eostara. Um, I'm going to say a little bit about it and then Nathan's going to share some pictures that I found. So Astara or Eostra, it's E-O-S-T-R-E, is an ancient Germanic goddess of spring and was celebrated in Europe before her festival became adopted then by early Christians as, yes, you could probably guess it, later becomes known as Easter. So Estara turns into Easter, Ostara turns into Easter. Jacob Grimm, one of the two brothers Grimm, wrote Estara or Aestra, however you want to say it, seems therefore to have been the, divin the divinity of the radiant dawn of the upspringing light, a spectacle that brings joy and blessing, whose meaning could be easily then adapted by the resurrection day of the Christian's God. So it makes sense then that the chosen day to represent the rebirth of Jesus was based around the time, the spring equinox, that was already already being celebrated for light and for life. Also, the naming of the hormone estrogen, essential to women's fertility, right, comes also from this goddess's name. Another fun fact is that the goddess is typically thought to have had shoulders and the head of a hair. Okay, Nathan, I'm going to ask that you bring up those images right now. I found some really beautiful pictures. I wish I should, uh, could have found some that were actually older, but nonetheless, here are some pictures of Eostra. Oh, well, this one's first. This was just a picture of spring and I couldn't help but just add it to our lip. I just, I loved this visual, thinking of spring breaking free. There's our goddess. And then the egg that we'll talk about too. I love that one. Is that the last one? Okay, lovely. So have any of you, before we move on, had any of you already known about this goddess or, or somewhat familiar with this legend? Malia's shaking her head. I can't see everyone, hold on. Okay, sorry, Malia said yes. Sarah said yes. Nobody else, um, uh, Linda said yes. Lovely, lovely, great. Okay, I was not familiar. It, it was new information to me, so I loved um, learning about it. So if she then is symbolized as this hair, right, the head and shoulders, or as we saw her holding the hair, the rabbit then becomes this totem. Um, it becomes very closely associated with spring um, and also with fertility. And obviously eventually the hair of Oster becomes the Easter bunny, right? Bringing eggs and gifts on Easter morning to kids. Um, so this season, which I love, then across the board, if you think about the Christian uh, view of it, if you think about the cultural view of it, if you think about these ancient myths, across the board, we are talking about and recognizing new life. We're talking about birth. We're talking about hope. We're talking about seeds of change. Um, we're talking about how spring has within it opportunity to start something, opportunity to invest in ourselves, opportunity to invest in our relationships, opportunity to invest in our work. Um, Rumi says, spring has returned. The earth is like a child that knows poems. Spring has returned. The earth is like a child that knows poems. 
So we are planting in this season, right? Some people are literally physically choosing to plant things outside. Ben was outside fertilizing the lawn today. Like it's a time for us to sow seeds, um, not just literally, but also symbolically in our lives, seeds for growth, um, thinking about that, which we want to bring out, to bring forth in our lives. Um, and with that then also comes this uh, time and need of nesting of us to choose to care for this thing. Um, how do we need to nurture this thing, to tend to it with water and with nutrients? Um, and then thinking for a few minutes about just the idea of birth and new life, like literally thinking about babies and newborns and, and what they can offer to us as we think about spring. Um, for me, a newborn offers us an example of presence. And again, I'm so glad that Chris, you started us off with that moment of recognizing the here and now, because I think that's something that babies call us to. They offer us the example of presence, of being present centered, like choosing to focus on the here and now. Well, babies, there, there really is no choice, right? They just feel things deeply in the moment. They do not put off emotions. Um, they do not put off, they don't have a delayed response. Um, they also do not live with some sense of worry or anxiety about the future because all they know and recognize is the now, to be here fully and to be here simply. Developmental psychologist Jean Piaget says the infant exhibits an unquestioned, an unquestioned acceptance of the given, an unquestioned acceptance of the given. And I love that. To me, that's such a challenge to unquestion and accept this given moment right here, right now. That then is the very embodiment of receptivity, um, that there's no room for critique, there's no room for comparison, there is only space for now, and the now offers a fullness to the child and can offer a fullness to us if we let it. Also something that I thought about, um, when the baby needs something, when the baby needs to be fed or needs to be changed, she demands care in a way almost that she presupposes that care is going to come. Like I'm going to demand something right now and I'm going to assume and, and presuppose that that thing will show up if I but ask for it. And then the universe, the world, the parent, right, is supposed to then take care of her. It is supposed to respond to the baby. And we in um, indeed as parents and as nurturers and as the broader community um, and as caregivers are supposed to help respond, right? We're supposed to respond and to help and to care. And so to me, that just uh, presupposition is this idea that there is a collective social responsibility innate in this world and the baby gets it. Like the baby gets it and the baby knows from moment one, I'm going to ask for something and I, that something should show up, that that is the way that the world works. Now, we know that doesn't always happen like that, right? Um, because we aren't always living into our fullness, but we can always, um, I think we can look to babies and trust that this is our example. This is our reminder, our inspiration of the world as it should be, a world where everyone has enough and no one needs to be afraid a world that is actually responsible to each other, a world where when JJ tells us he's hurting or, or has needs immediately or before, blah, blah, before he told us I have needs and need something, Leah says, tell us what we can do for you. Doug says, hey, don't, don't hesitate to ask. Like that is the world as it should be. That's us choosing to lean into each other, to see a need and to respond to it, to not wait on someone else to take up responsibility for us, but to say, you are my responsibility, JJ. So now it's your responsibility to actually ask, right? Like that's the beauty of that cycle. That's the beauty to me when thinking about an infant and a baby is like, okay, that's our example right there. Another thing that I think a newborn or a baby gives us is innocence. Um, and that this is and should be this foundation, again, of our own receptivity, of our own um, openness, this idea that innocence mean I am open, I am willing, I um, am curious, I uh, like an innocence that leads to wonder, right? An innocence that leads to curiosity. And again, this is another example, I think, that can assure and affirm our own longing to trust to trust each other, to trust the world. I think that's something innate in us that again has been hurt, right? Over and over, we've tried to trust and people have failed us, but that doesn't mean that's not how it should be. That doesn't mean how, um, that that's not, that the, that 
the way that the world is actually intended to be. So can we look to this innocence and this idea of innocence, much like the Buddhist uh, concept of beginner's mind, right? Coming to this moment and saying, okay, I'm open. I'm wide open to what the world has for me in this moment. And I'm going to come into this teachable. I'm gonna come into this humble. I'm gonna come into this innocent like a child. And so I'm hoping that we could realize that innocence, it was once our birthright as babies, but it can now as we grow and mature also become our ability. We can use this thing. We can live into this capacity that children then around us that they don't only embody innocence for us, but they can also keep grounding us in innocence. They can keep reminding us um, the beauty of innocence. They are instant and often right gratifying reminders of joy. Like you see a baby, most people, when you see a beautiful baby, you gasp in wonder, you gasp in awe, you're delighted to see it. So they're reminders of joy, but I think they can also be reminders of innocence and of presence. So as spring is approaching and it feels like, uh, I don't know, Alana, where you are in Hermer, but for the rest of us in Nashville, like it feels like a gorgeous spring day outside right now. The sun is shining. It's probably 65 degrees ish, maybe closer to 70, um, but just beautiful. And so spring is here. It's teasing us that it's almost here. And I want us to think then, how can we one, recognize it? How can we honor it? How can we pay attention to the nature around us? But also how can we recognize the humanity within us and the divinity? Oh, I just think the divine is all throughout every bit of this, um, calling to us, beckoning us to live fully in this moment, to um, live fully and accountable to this moment right here and right now. And so Hermer saying, it's a hellish summer where you are. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Um, okay, so I have some questions for us that Nathan's gonna put on the screen um, for us to respond to. And it can be something that you write. We wanna give a few moments either way for you to process and for you to write um, and or just for you to process and, and be able to um, speak aloud in just a moment and share with us. Um, but these are my questions for all of us, including for myself, um, the questions of spring. What is being birthed in you? What do you want to birth or create in this season? How will you nurture this new thing? And in thinking about our newborn, our baby's example, how can you be more present with life? How can you be more willing to cooperate? We're going to put all these up, okay? Don't worry. How can you be more willing to cooperate with life when it comes at you and for you? How can you be more willing to partner with others? Again, this is this communal idea, this social responsibility, this collective group thing where I actually choose to lean in. How can I choose to be more willing to partner with others? And that would include asking for help right when you need it. And then finally, can you decide to bloom wherever this season has already planted you? Can you decide to let go and to trust and to just give yourself fully to this moment? Okay, Nathan's gonna put those on the screen. We're gonna play a little bit of lovely instrumental music and give us a few moments. Oh, that looks lovely, Nathan, thank you. Um, give us a few minutes to respond and then hopefully share.
of us some sleeping at last. Okay, so obviously not enough time for you to answer all of those questions or, or maybe even more than a few, but I would love to hear from any of you that would be willing to um, tell us any of your responses, um, either to the questions or, or to what has been discussed today so far. Yeah, something I think about that question about what is being birthed in you, and I often think it's like, is it like a physical thing? You know, not like, I'm not actually birthing a baby, but you know, like, what is that? And just really, that's the question that stuck out to me. And just my word of the year is move. And so it, that's, it's been interesting to reflect on that month by month. Um, and I think about how, like, what's being birthed is like, the ability to know the energy that I need to show up with in in different spaces in my life and for some time for my job with my relationships um, with with just my goals uh, and just that discernment has become sharper and that's been really motivating and exciting but also sometimes very lonely because what that movement if the movement slows me down and, and calls me to withdraw or you know um, which is not always, or create more boundaries, which is something I'm not great at. So like um, just noticing that more, but also all of those, that that awareness is really like rooted in that letting go piece, letting go and allowing uh, and trusting the process of creation and the universe and what it's doing in my life and, uh, and, and being proud of, those decisions I make, the small little things that are, that are, you know, planting seeds of what I want versus doing the old ways of, of what I thought would cultivate X, Y, Z. So that's kind of what I'm ruminating on. I love it. And also, yeah. also my word is movement. Yeah. So my word of the year. So I'm also trying to pay attention, not just, uh, literally in, in the large ways that I like to move and, and what that does for me. But mm -hmm. also I've been paying a, uh, more attention to the energy that I have control over. Um, mm, yeah. Understanding when like the movement of what I'm saying and how I'm acting is affecting the people around me. And mm -hmm. I obviously mm -hmm. mainly with my kids um, and yeah. Benny, but that just paying attention to energy and how I can respond to it, how I, ca I can shift things. So uh -huh. that the uh -huh. movement of the energy that I'm affecting um, is happening in a positive way versus yeah. in a negative way. Like, but, yeah, so I love, I resonate with totally. everything. Yeah. yeah. Who else? And Christina, we're glad you're here. We're just responding to some questions um, that we just posted. I don't know if there's a way, maybe Nathan to put that PDF in the chat possibly. No, maybe you could copy and paste the questions in the chat, something like that for Christina. We were talking about spring and what it's calling us to. Who else? Responding to any of those questions and or just the idea of spring and newness and, oh, thank you, Nathan. Come on, Malia. Oh, Chris. <laughs> Malia's like, don't call me out. Chris, I see that hand. Yeah, he's he's actually doing it for me. Um, not not so much about spring, but more about the community thing that we were talking about. Yeah. Uh, a few years ago, the only wild goose that I've gone to, uh, Amy Grant was, was performing and she spoke for a little while. And one of the things that she said that really struck me was that it is need that creates community. And I'd never thought about that before because I was I was raised to be very independent and you don't ask for anything and you're always the one that gives it and and I guess Christianity as I became part of that circle it almost kind of fed into that like we, we were the givers not necessarily the needers. Um, and so I, it just really struck me that that as I as I pondered it, it truly is if if there's no need there's no need for community really. Uh, we don't, we, I mean, yeah, we hang out to be friends and stuff, but that isn't really necessarily community. It's when there's a need that, and you see that even in our society, when there's a, when there's a crisis nationally, suddenly there's this sense of community that we all have, and we all rush to that need. 
uh, if not physically, then at least emotionally or financially or whatever it is, there is just that sense of community. And um, so I just, yeah. I don't know how that exactly relates to spring, but I think oh, I it's, it. it's, good. it's an important thing to think about. 100%. And I think, I think the, the naming, the idea that there is a need of connection, like we are born with the need to connect um, and, and thus have our needs met, like these other actual needs met to what you're pointing to. And so I love that. I mean, I think that's exactly what we need to be reminded of and, and the example of the newborn baby and how they're connected to not just the mother, but the parents and or the community, right? It takes a, it takes a village, right? Truly, it should take a village and we should all understand that responsibility um, as each of ours to respond to each other. Sorry, someone's opening my door. Okay, Malia. Oh, Malia, you do have something to share. Mm -hmm. Love it. Fine. Shame me into it. No. <laughs> No, so I was concentrated on uh, the question, um, which where is it? How no? The new, uh, how can I be more present with this with life? Um, it's something that I actually have been thinking about a lot lately, and I don't really have an answer for it. But I noticed this in myself a while ago. Um, so I'll have to back up a little bit. And um, I used to attend a Wednesday night Vesper service at Otter Creek Church. Um, I attended that service for well over 10 years. Um, and um, for various reasons, COVID probably being primarily the biggest reason, but also just because theologically, I had moved way past what um, a lot of, you know, a lot of the religions religious thought and practice and faith of that community had, um, I stopped going. And, um, but that was one hour a week where I was very present. Um, we did practices. There was, it was a contemplative service. So there were a lot of practices and one of our practices was silence. And we would sit in complete silence for several minutes. Um, and then at the end of the service, there would be also another time that wasn't completely silent because there would always be like some kind of ambient music or background music um and we had the opportunity to move through what they called stations and just did like writing prompts and maybe prayer stations and things like that um or you could just sit quietly in the pew and reflect which i would often do so that was a whole hour i had every week of just being completely present and i haven't had that in over a year <laughs> now and um it's, um, it's, I've noticed that I have become less present in, in life, um, in my, with my family, with myself, and just like, um, so prone to distraction. And um, I haven't taken um, time on a regular basis to just to reflect, to meditate, anything like that, to introspect. Um, and yeah, so I don't have an answer, but I know I need to find one. <laughs> Oh, that's just, that's really where I am right now this spring is trying to figure out how to be present. Well, that's great. I mean, that is the answer though, Malia. I mean, that, <laughs> that is, that's the beauty of like, hey, I recognize I need this. And so I begin, right? That, that's the, the, the beauty of yeah. this part is it's it. It's like kind of going back to, or going off what um, um, Sarah said about word of the year, my word of the year was start. Um, and so I'm like, okay, start, <laughs> got to start somewhere, start. <laughs> Love it. I love it. Thank you for that. I was just, I was trying to find, I'm reading this amazing book that I've started three times now, um, Nature and the Human Soul. It's huge. And I've literally, y'all, like I underline and re-underline and just, it's, there's so much depth, but somewhere in here, they're talking about when you um, are trying to connect. Um, uh, where is it? It may take me a moment to find it, but anyways, it's calling us, it's it's the power of meditation. It's the power of silence um, ultimately and, and why silence is used across so many religious um, practices and, and in other spiritual communities. It's because it is so powerful to sit and to actually reconnect with yourself and to get quiet, like push all the way, uh, all the busyness of the world and your thoughts and your anxieties and just get quiet and get present um, so that we can truly hear what we need, right? And, and how we can express that. So I love that, Malia. Thank Thank you for sharing that. Anybody else want to share what you're ruminating on? 
Christina, yeah, Christina. Hi. Let me shut my window. Okay, go ahead, Christina. Okay, so I feel like a lot of things have been shifting and changing. And like, this is the time. Like, I just got Reiki 3 certified today. That's why, like, I totally forgot about this because I was like, I did the Reiki 3 and then I was meditating because it just, I've been meditating like every day for a while. It's so much different than prayer. I don't really pray anymore. That's just the honest truth. I just meditate and it's, and all this stuff, right? And stuff just comes. And, um, so I feel like there's been like a shifting a lot of, um, so spring, Ossetera and all that stuff. Um, <laughs> it's been amazing. So I feel like as for like new births and beginning and all this stuff, um, I'm recently divorced <laughs> and all that. And it's, it's good though. We're still friends and my kid is with him. It's all good. But it's been a time of like, just trying to figure out like, okay, what is, like, what is my place in this universe and all that jazz? So um, I just feel a lot of that. Like, I have so many fucking, I sorry, I, I have a lot of ideas and they just keep like blossoming everywhere. So I've just been trying to roll with all of them. Like I make bracelets and necklaces and anyways, a bunch of different stuff, right? And all these directions. So I just kind of been like, okay, let's focus in on one fucking thing at a time. So Reiki 3 certified, <laughs> I'm like ready to start that up. And then the other stuff on the, you know, the side. So spring, I love it. And it's so beautiful how like spring comes after winter, right? Cause winter is like all silent and quiet and snow and just, and then all of a sudden spring, it's like this quiet time before things happen. Like you have to have the quiet beforehand. Otherwise everything just becomes like mushy and crazy and you know, a big fog. Um, if that makes sense. Oh my gosh. And I've been reading so many fucking books of like, okay, the newest one, um, just speaking of books, right? This is not as thick as yours, like, but it's been good. Just about grace. Okay. When I, cause I'm not really doing the church thing anymore at all. Like that just kind of, um, but it's not like grace, like grace, like it's different. Right. Cause when I first, cause my yoga teacher was like, Hey, you should read this book. And whatever she says, I do it. Cause she's pretty right on. And it's just been about that like how like letting go of any kind of agendas or anything and just being like in the here and now, like the power of now and stuff. Uh, anyways, I could go on and on. It's just been beautiful. I feel like it's a time of just like listening and following and not giving, not getting stuck or trapped in any kind of like, this is the way it should be. Like things are always fucking changing. Even the fucking like atoms in furniture or whatever, it's always nothing still. And so it's just learning to like ride those waves and trust and I'm um, not have to be stuck in any kind of, at least for me, and I, it, it works better to not be stuck in any kind of set anything. I love it. You weren't here the whole time, and yet you've just done like a concise, like here, here's the summation of what we've discussed today. So oh. you're right in line with everything that we've been saying and, and restated it to us. So I love it, and I love your energy. I'm feeding off of it. I'm so glad you chose to get on um, even though it was later, I hope you'll come back, Christina. Um, oh, yeah. and I, so many of my actual responses, like I'm writing, like grace is actually what I feel like is being birthed in me. And, and obviously also in a much newer and different way um, than before. Have any of you, did any of you see, if you follow Gert, um, Comfrey on Facebook, they shared this week, um, about going through a traumatic situation where they were, um, hurt by someone, um, and traumatized by them. And then they talked about, um, this restorative justice approach and the grace they were offering the person who harmed them. I mean, it was, first mm -hmm. of all, it's so beautiful, but second, it was so damn challenging. Um, and so I encourage you to go read that. I think, I think their Facebook feed is public. Um, if you aren't already friends with them, but yeah, grace is part of what I'm personally not just learning, but a, what a, a deeper grace is being birthed in me, um, in this season. That was one of my things. So I'm so glad you brought that up, Christina. And again, I'm really glad you chose to join us. Thanks. Me too. Okay. Anybody else? Yeah. Chris, Chris. Um, Christina, thanks for, uh, speaking up. The, the F-bombs are like prayer language around here. So it's all okay. good. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's all perfect. So um, 
I've done the same job since 1987, longer than many of you have been alive. Um, and it's comfortable and easy for me. And talk, I mean, 10,000 hours to be an expert, like I have 100,000 hours. And, and so I'm an expert at this job. And I'm also loath to start something new. Um, and so I uh, got inspired in the last couple of months to get some recording equipment. So like I have, I have a, uh, like a microphone and a mixing board and um, I'm, I'm putting my energy towards starting like a voiceover business. And it's a slightly terrifying prospect for me because I'm an Enneagram three. So it, I want to be the best and I want to be perfect and blah, blah, blah. And the image is important and all that. But I'm, I, I just want to say that, show you that and say, this is something that I'm getting training every week in some way or another. And, um, and so this is something that's being birthed in me uh, that I have levels of excitement and terror, um, you know, kind of an equal measure, but that's going on. Thank you. Oh, I love it, Chris. I love it. I love it. I love it. Thank you for sharing that and honoring. Also, the beauty of sharing these things that we're learning is that then we choose to put it out there and thus we can become accountable for it, right? We can hold each other accountable in the most beautiful of ways, not in the shameful of a shameful way, but in a way that's like, hey, how's that going? Same way, like we were like, JJ, how are you feeling? Like I knew he was having some tests. Like we choose to step into and be accountable to each other. Um, so I can't wait to see how all these births are going to grow and come to fruition. Anybody else? Leah, Nathan, Alana, yeah. Yeah, yeah, your sound working. Can you kind of throw me into where we are? Because when I can't... Oh, you're breaking up again, Alana. Sorry. Am I breaking up? Yes. I hate it because we always want to hear what you say and it, it breaks up after so many words. We're just responding to the questions. Did you see the questions? Um, oh, yes. Okay. Yeah, so we're just sharing anything that maybe we wrote down and or responding to what we talked about. Um, yes, I can actually share an experience of letting go of stuff. Can you hear me? <laughs> okay. Yeah, 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 so far. Okay. All right, um, so uh, a hard thing for me to let go but it is something I've held on to for a long time, and that's the old me. Um, and when I say the old me, I mean the old me that just the old person that I wants to do to what I used to do. And I was actually faced with something that was very hard to do. Um, a, a very famous group, <laughs> well, in the Christian music, um, I was actually invited to participate in a live Zoom. And normally it would have been my awesome, true, and true type thing. But since I'm a new person now, since I have a new skin and I have been born, I had to I had to decline it. And it has, you know, um because there, there was some hurt involved in the thing that they had done. And um it hurt me, it hurt, you know. And, and so it was scary to do that because you always want to hold on to that that little bit. And um, it's like at that moment, I finally let that past go. I, I let that part of me go. And um, the next day, like yesterday, I just felt so free. You know, I, I went around to the Native American village and it was just, I just felt so free and so connected to the world. Like, at that moment, because that was the final thing I had not let go. Uh, and so I kept trying to keep up with all the And it's just something we did. It's just something we need. Just like the fact that the brakes on, I have to start a new chapter. And it was hard because I I went to Woodland Church. I'm a leader, you know. And it was hard to walk. 
because she, you get to know someone in the perception of and like finding a relationship and then we become this little more person. But I did it. And um, so that's, that was my letting go. But I, I am embracing new life and I'm learning new things. And it's going to be a struggle. I know it will be, but um, I can do it. And, um, yeah. So I Love just it. Mm-hmm. Um, Thank you for but, sharing that. Oh, sorry. No, I'm sorry. I just wanted to share one more positive thing instead yeah. of. Um, uh, so I guess I covered the the and the being reborn, um, and uh, partnering with others is 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 something I would like to do, um, just in any way I can. And I'm actually in the process of trying to start a all inclusive gender uh, supporting group. So. Um, uh, if you got any tips on how to be a proper admin, you know, <laughs> that would be great. But um, yeah, I'm in the process of putting that together because it's, it's going to be all genders, you know, non binary, transgender, gay, straight, whoever. It's going to be like that. Because there's nothing for older people. There's stuff in high school, but there's no gay, straight alliances for like, older people who are still going So. But it's going to be open to all genders of all races, anything. But I am going to start trying to put that together. So that would be my, I guess that would be my new um, working with others. I I love it. I'm informed as to how that is going. (laughs) But um, it's in the very beginning stages. I'm still planning like what I want to do. But um, I have some people on board who are already going to help. I love it. I love it. And if you, I hope you don't mind me saying, but I feel like we've been privy to watch you sort of grow into who you are and your confidence just continues to exude. And not only do you seem so secure now in who you are, but you're also like reaching out towards others, which should be the natural progression of like deep maturity. And I just, I honor that in you. And and we're so thankful that you're here and you're a part of all that we're doing. (laughs) Uh, one quick thing is that I felt so bad when I found out stuff about Michael Jackson. I felt so bad because like I came on and it, it was like I'm talking about like the past because I was still kind of stuck there. And it was like, oh my goodness, I'm talking about this and it's like, yeah. <laughs> no, don't feel bad at all. No, 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 no. There's nothing to feel bad for. And I also love to your first point about sharing the first thing. I, I, that's a great reminder for all of us. Like we want to move forward. We may be ready to move forward. And yet there's some part of us that may still be holding on to something and to be able to figure out what that is and how to truly let go so that you can move on is so important. I'm about to do a um, divorce ritual with someone um, who's already divorced and yet they know that they're still holding on to something and so you just you're taking note of that it's like let's pay attention to that and let's grieve and then truly let go so we can move on so anyways it reminded me of that thank you for sharing that um anybody else we're I don't want to stop if anyone else wants to share I loved all of this okay great Okay, thanks so much for being here today, you all. Um, I hope you will continue to pay attention to spring and all that nature is offering and affording us um, and all that the universe is conspiring um, on your behalf for. And again, the ways in which not only are we paying attention to our own growth, but how we can reach out and serve others. Um, We will have happy hour this Wednesday and every Wednesday. And and so many on this Zoom are always involved in that. And it's a lovely way to just push into community and, and touch base and laugh and lean in um, and find out what to watch and what to eat on top of other things. (laughs) I think there's always laughter though, so that's good. Um, Also, our next gathering is the end of the month, uh, the 27th, so we'll look forward to that. Um, And then we end with a toast. Uh, Christina, again, I'm so glad you were here. I hope you will come back next time with us uh, officially and continue to lean in with us and, and teach and grow with us. Uh, we love hearing dialoguing is like the core of what we do. So there's always some kind of a teaching and practices, but then there's always time to share so we can learn from each other. Um, okay. I have a longer quote to read, not too long, but it's by Richard Lewis, uh, living by wonder. 
says in our grasshopper and salamander days, who among us didn't ask why the grasshopper could jump so far or why the salamander had black dots on its orange body. We trampled leaves with our feet just to hear what kind of sounds leaves made. We threw flat stones over the surface of streams to see how far stones could skip. We listened to crickets cry in nights far beyond our grasp of what darkness was. We slept only to wake with the strange sense of how could we be awake when we'd only just been sleeping. In those days, we knew as much as we had to know in order to ask what we didn't know. Our ignorance wasn't just innocence, but the foundation from which we offered ourselves the daily surprise of discovering another question, another way to uncover, uncover something mysterious, something we hadn't understood yesterday. We lived by wonder, far, uh, for by wondering we were able to multiply a growing consciousness of being alive. May we live by wonder, friends, for by wondering, we are able to multiply a growing consciousness of being alive. Cheers to all of you and to spring. Love y'all. Have an amazing week. And then we'll see you Wednesday. Pay attention to the email tomorrow. It's amazing. Dr. Robin gave us a long, amazing thing to read. So hope you'll read it. Okay, love y'all. Have a great day.